Hello, boys and girls. Today we're going to read chapter three of Flat Stanley. I hope you loved chapters one and two, and hopefully you have your flat Mrs. Snyder around with you, and hopefully you are maybe taking some pictures with flat Mrs. Snyder while you are reading, or while you're doing your work, or I don't know, maybe when you're eating dinner or watching TV or something like that. So, all right, we are going to pick up on chapter three, and it is called Stanley the Kite. And remember, and when there are pictures, I'll show you. Mr. Lambchop had always liked to take the boys out with him on Sunday afternoons to a museum or roller skating in the park. But it was difficult when they were crossing streets or moving about in crowds. Stanley and Arthur would often be jostled from his side, and Mr. Lambchop worried about speeding taxis or that hurrying people might accidentally knock them down. It was easier after Stanley got flat. Mr. Lambchop discovered that he could roll Stanley up without hurting him at all. He would tie a piece of string around Stanley to keep him from unrolling and make a little loop in the string for himself. It was as simple as carrying a parcel and he could hold on to Arthur with the other hand. Stanley did not mind being carried because he had never much liked to walk. Arthur didn't like to walk either, but he had to and it made him mad. There they are walking. One Sunday afternoon, in the street, they met Ralph Jones, an old college friend of Mr. Lambchop's. Well, George, I see you have bought some wallpaper, Mr. Jones said. Going to decorate your house, I suppose? Wallpaper, said Mr. Lambchop. Oh, no, this is my son, Stanley. He undid the string and Stanley unrolled. How do you do, Stanley said. Nice to meet you, young feller, the man said. George, he said to Mr. Lambchop, that boy is flat. Smart, too, Mr. Lambchop said. Stanley is third from the top in his class at school. Phooey, said Arthur. This is my younger son, Arthur, Mr. Lambchop said. And he will apologize for his rudeness. Arthur could only blush and apologize. Mr. Lambchop rolled Stanley up again and they set out and they set out for home. It rained quite hard while they were on their way. Stanley, of course, hardly got wet at all, just around the edges, but Arthur got soaked. Late that night, Mr. and Mrs. Lambchop heard a noise out in the living room. They found Arthur lying on the floor near the bookcase. He had piled a great many volumes of the Encyclopedia Britannica on top of himself. What do you think Arthur's trying to do? Put some more on me, Arthur said. When he saw them, don't just stand there, help me. Mr. and Mrs. Lambchop sent him back to bed, but the next morning they spoke to Stanley. Arthur can't help being jealous, they said. Be nice to him. You're his big brother after all. Somebody's jealous of Stanley. The next Sunday, Stanley and Arthur went to the park by themselves. The day was sunny, but windy too. And many older boys were flying beautiful, enormous kites with long tails made in all the colors of the rainbow. Arthur sighed. Oh, someday, he said, I will have a big kite and I will win a kite flying contest and be famous. Like everyone else, nobody knows who I am these days. Stanley remembered what his parents had said. He went to a boy whose kite was broken and borrowed a large spool of string. You can fly me, Arthur, he said. Come on. He attached the string to himself and gave Arthur the spool to hold. He ran lightly across the grass sideways to get up speed, and then he turned to meet the breeze. Up, 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 up went Stanley being a kite. He knew just how to manage on the gusts of wind. He faced, he faced full into the wind if he wanted to rise and let it take him from behind when he wanted speed. 
He had only, he had only to turn his thin edge to the wind carefully, a little at a time, so that it did not hold him. And then he would slip gracefully down toward the earth again. Arthur let out all the string and Stanley soared high above the trees, a beautiful sight in his red shirt and blue trousers against the pale blue sky. Everyone in the park stood still to watch. Stanley swooped right and then left in long match swoops. He held his arms by his sides and zoomed at the ground like a rocket and curved up again and toward the sun. He side slipped and circled and made figure eights and crosses and a star. Nobody has ever flown the way Stanley Lambchop flew that day. Probably no one ever will again. I wonder how that makes Arthur feel. You think Arthur's jealous again? After a while, of course, people grew tired of watching and Arthur got tired of running about with the empty spool. Stanley went right on, though, showing off. Three boys came up to Arthur and invited him to join them for a hot dog and some soda pop. Arthur left the spool wedged in the fork of a tree. He did not notice, while he was eating the hot dog, that the wind was blowing the string and... Tangle it about the tree. The string got shorter and shorter but Stanley did not realize how low he was until leaves brushed his feet. And then it was too late. He got stuck in the branches. 15 minutes passed before Arthur and the other boys heard his cries and climbed up to set him free. Stanley would not speak to his brother that evening. And at bedtime, even though Arthur had apologized, he was still cross. Alone with Mr. Lambchop in the living room, Mrs. Lambchop sighed and shook her head. You're at the office all day having fun, she said. You don't realize what I go through with the boys. They're very difficult. Kids are like that, Mr. Lambchop said. Phases. Be patient, dear. And that takes us to chapter four. What do you guys think? I hope you are loving this as much as I am. I will probably do chapter four here soon, and we'll probably do them chapter by chapter. All right, my friends, I hope you enjoyed it. Bye-bye.